All right, guys, so today we're going to add the 7950X with 4090 on Windows 11 to the Warzone benchmarks that I ran a few days ago. Um, if you missed that video, um, it's just the last video I posted on this channel. It was 5950X with 4090, Windows 11 and Windows 10 on three different spots on Caldera, as well as one spot Fortune's Keep, one spot Rebirth Island. Um, and I also did the 12900K with the 4090 in all those same locations on the different maps. So we're going to add that today with the, the 7950X and 4090. Um, I'll go over the rig and the specs and everything, but uh, as always, if you guys like the content, don't forget to subscribe. Um, I'm going to be posting a lot more on this channel, more tech videos, more tech reviews. Um, I got a bunch of weird tech things I want to uh, make videos on, but yeah, be sure to get subscribed if you want to see those. And if you want to help support the channel and you like the content, be sure to drop a like. But let's jump into it. We'll talk about the 7950X with 4090 benchmarks. So the rig for the 7950X is an ASUS TUF um, X670E motherboard and then the ASUS TUF again uh, RTX 4090. I have two sticks of 16 uh, 6000 CL32 RAM. Um, so it's a pretty high performing rig but again none of it's been tuned or anything so the RAM timings are just the default uh, AMD Expo same thing as like Intel XMP. Um, so it is overclocked, but it's just overclocked to the advertised values. So an, an expert could come in there and tune that a little bit for you and you get quite a bit more FPS. Um, but I really think most people just run these things stock. So that's what I'm going to do my benchmarks. No overclock on the CPU, no overclock on the GPU, and no overclock on the RAM except the default overclock that comes with it. All right, so this is going to be a much quicker video. I'm just going to fly through these benchmarks because they're all really, really similar. So this is the first one. This is on Caldera at Airfield, 1440p, 4090. Um, 7950X, 5950X, 12900K, and then 5950X also had Windows 10 and Windows 11. Um, basically, I ran the exact same path for all of these. There are about 20, 30 seconds of running in the exact same line on the map, exact same game modes. So they were all in either Plunder for Caldera or live game, like live matches for uh, Fortune's Keep and Rebirth Island. Um, so this is about as consistent as you can get. Like there's been no game updates. So the, even the game modes themselves were the same between all these different tests. So this is going to give a really good picture of how these perform in Warzone. And that will translate really well to Warzone 2 because it's not a new engine. It's just an updated engine. Um, so it's going to be probably pretty similar to how this one performs overall, at least relative to each other, I would expect. Um, so right off the bat, we're going to see that the 7950X in green uh, with the 4090 on Windows 11, by far the highest maximum FPS. Uh, by far the highest average FPS, the best 1% lows, the best 0.1% lows. So just right out of the box, this is all completely stock. I didn't overclock any of this because I think that's how most people use these products. Um, obviously, you could get these things tuned and they would perform dramatically better. Warzone specifically uh, performs much, much better when you get your PC tuned by an expert that knows RAM timings and, and really detailed things for RAM um, to increase those FPS. But the vast majority of people are just going to buy this and they're just going to use it out of the box how it is. So that's how I'm testing it today, just so you guys can get a feel for the base level performance. Um, you really can push all the way up to near like 300 FPS average in a lot of places um, on Caldera with tuning um, if you have the best possible system. But um, yeah, I just wanted to, to mention that. But overall, 7950X is just tearing it up here with the DDR5 uh, and the 4090. Next up, we've got the benchmarks at Capital on Caldera. So Capital tends to be the hardest spot to run um, on any map that's in Warzone. So it's just got a lot of buildings, a lot of uh, objects and things. So um, the 7950X actually takes an even bigger lead here. It's almost the same as it is everywhere else. You're going to see that throughout these tests is that the FPS values were really similar for all these different numbers. It didn't matter which map I was on or which spot I was on on the map, uh, just really consistent. So it takes a huge lead here, almost 40 FPS over the 5950X uh, and 50 FPS over the 12900K. Um, same for average and then 1% lows and 0.1% lows. I talked about this in the last video, but I personally think those are the most important. Um, so I was planning on running my 12900K rig uh, for my gaming PC until uh, the 13900K came out, which is in three days. So as soon as I get that, I'll make a video on that as well. Um, but I swapped that all around. So now I'm using the 12900K as my, my streaming work rendering PC and then the 7950X with the 4090 is going to be my actual gaming rig until the 13900K comes out. We'll see how that performs in Warzone and then I'll switch it up again if I have to. Um, but again, the RAM that I have for the 12900K rig is not great. It's 2x8, 4000 CL15, which is fast RAM, but it is not dual rank. It's single rank. So um, a lot of people pointed that out to me. Like, I, I know that. I wasn't trying to say that these are perfectly parallel tests. I was just kind of saying this is the equipment I have and this is the results that came out. You guys can decide for yourself. 
um, the actual like conclusions about that. So 7950X is just dominating every benchmark so far. At peak, we seem to see the same story here. There's not quite as big of a difference between the 5950X Windows 10 and the uh, 7950X on Windows 11, but it's still a win for the 7950X, especially on the 1% lows and 0.1% lows. Um, the only test that this ever lost, the 7950X ever lost, was the 0.1% low at peak. So overall, uh, just destroying everything, and this was probably just a fluke, probably just wasn't a long enough test to get those 0.1% lows to go back up after some asset rendered or something. As I'm going through this, I just want to remind you guys, don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more content like this, since I'm not posting this on my main True Game Data channel. Um, a lot of you probably are not subscribed. It's probably like 80-90% of the people viewing this are not subscribed. Um, so if you want to see more of this tech content in the future, whether it's benchmarks, tech reviews for controllers, mount, mice and keyboard, um, I have weird things like AR glasses, Steam Deck. Uh, I, I just have all kinds of weird tech because I love it. So if you want to see things like that, don't forget to get to subscribe. If you don't want to see things like that, no worries. Obviously, you don't have to subscribe, but I appreciate you. Let's keep going. Fortune's Keep again. Uh, max FPS is around 250. Um, average FPS around 240. 1% lows are you know, 160-ish, and then 0.1% low is 131. So extremely consistent FPS across all the different game modes and just pretty much destroying the 5950X and 12900K. Um, I wish I had a 5800X 3D to test. That probably would have performed similarly to the 7950X from what I understand. Um, but buying all this new tech and testing it for you guys, um, I'm gonna sell my, my 5950X motherboard, CPU, and RAM just to save some money. Um, so I won't be doing a 5800X 3D review um, but I will do the 13900K and I do have the 7950X. All right, then on Rebirth, Rebirth tends to be the easiest to run map. So we've got um, 260 FPS max and then 243 average on the 7950X, which is a little bit faster than the other ones, but because it's a little easier to run, um, it tends to perform better on the other hardware as well. Uh, you can see the 1% lows and 0.1% lows are just a little bit better than everything else, but they are still winning. Um, so if you're playing the smaller maps, it's not gonna make that much difference unless you get these things tuned. Um, but overall, 7950X is still winning even on uh, Rebirth Island. And again, same thing I did in uh, the previous video. Because the tests were very consistent between all the different game modes, uh, I just averaged them all out and gave you a war zone as a whole average for these cards. And then I also changed the scaling on the Y axis so it only goes from 90 to 250. That's to exaggerate the differences in uh, these different products so you can see a little better how they perform. Uh, and you can see that, I mean, the same story we saw through the whole, whole benchmark. Um, 7950X is just pretty much dominating. So 250 max FPS average across different game modes. Uh, next best was 5950X at 222. And then the 1200K was down at 200. Granted, the 1200K, my system might have something wrong with it, to be honest. Like I've had really bad issues trying to get RAM to be compatible with it. So my 3600 uh, 2x16 CL14 kit does not work, period in that uh, 1200K rig, even though it says it should on the QVL. Um, same with my 4400 CL17 2x16 kit. That also doesn't work. So I'm hoping both those kits will work in my 13900K when I get that uh, in the next few days, and then we can really see what these Intel rigs can do. Um, but even with the 4000 CL15 2x8 RAM that I ran these tests with, it still had the best 1% lows besides the 7950X. So those to me are the most important because that's what makes the game feel buttery smooth um, and consistent. So I was planning on using that rig, but now that the 7950X just destroyed it and everything, like even 1% lows, it's 20 FPS higher and 1% lows, 20 FPS higher and 0.1% lows, and then obviously average, it's it's like 50 FPS higher. So it just destroyed it in every way, at least with my setup. Um, so I am going to use the 7950X for my gaming rig, 12900K for my work, streaming, rendering PC. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover. 7950X is doing an excellent job with Warzone specifically. Obviously, I'm not testing other games. I can test other games, and I might do that in the future. Um, I don't want this to just become a benchmark-only channel, but because my whole community is from Warzone, and I also care about Warzone FPS, and I have the systems to test it, and not very many other people do very good Warzone benchmarking, uh, just because it's tough to do, because you have to do in kind of live matches and things like that to get real numbers. Um, I thought it would be just good for me to make some benchmark videos about Warzone. But um, again, if you want to see more content like this, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, like the video if you like the content, and I will see you all in the next one.